Olga has a, doesn't have a place. Slow down, just slow down. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everyone's just getting here. I think we did a pretty good job today with the mess of traffic, to tell you the truth. Everybody's here. So start by not being in a hurry to do anything. There's no destination here to practice yoga. Just settle into being here right now. I'm never sure how to start these classes. I like Bromery, so let's start like this. Feet knees, heels together, hips on the heels, because I, I like the Bromery. We're not going to start with that, though. We'll start with a nice Ujjayi. First, find a hero pose, please. Feet knees, heel, heels together, hips on the heels. Sit cross-legged. It's called Sukhasana, or legs out in front of you. The straight spine's a big deal. If you're in hero pose, hands round over the knees, the arms lock. It's a big deal, guys. I want a nice straight spine with your shoulders relaxed. Close your eyes, and just start a nice, strong Ujjayi breath. So everybody, if you don't know it, learn it right now. And above the white noise, I'd really like you to be able to hear and feel your breath. And as you're practicing your ujjayi breath, hearing and feeling the breath, dragging on the back of the throat, there's an intent to let your mind, your conscious mentality, vanish into just being present, into a self. That's just right here, right now, breathing. That's all, nothing more, nothing less. So it's really simple stuff, yoga. It should be very natural, very organic. And we're just kind of changing our caps right now with the ujjayi breath. So make it a little longer and a little stronger and a little deeper. This can be extremely effective when we do it as a group. And like I said, I already let the cat out of the bag. We are going to do some Brahmari after this. I like it is why it's extremely powerful when we do it as a group. But right now, just letting the mind vanish into being present and affirming you're here just to hear and feel your breath and keep your eyes on your drishti and practice your best yoga today. And at the end of your next exhale, let the breath return to normal. Close your eyes and settle into your practice, everybody. So the yoga is settling into being right here, right now. Take a big inhale through the nose. Make the lungs as uncomfortably full as you can hold them. Nice straight spine, everybody, with the inhale. And hum like a bee. In the mask of the face, like you want to make your eyeballs vibrate. That's breath. I want you to hear and feel your breath. Continue to hear and feel your breath. Feeling the vibration in the face, through your chest and your arms maybe, through your back. As you make it longer and stronger and deeper. Like there's more bees. There, that was a big difference. That's a big difference right there. Let's do that again. More bees. This should hurt a little bit if you're doing it right, squeezing all the old breath out of the body, a quick inhale, and back to... And feel the vibration in the room we create. That's what I like. You can feel the vibration in the room we create. I'd like you to create that vibration in the room. I'd like you to create that vibration with your Brahmari. Letting the mind vanish into the self. Feel it? One more big one, everybody. At the end of this exhale, let the breath return to normal. Finish it nicely. Listen into it. Make it hurt and listen into it. Settle with it. Your best yoga today. Slowly open the eyes. Come to a hands and knees position, please. Facing the front of the yoga room. Engage your core. Just nice, 
present observer to your best practice today. Stack your joints nicely, exhale around your back and look into your navel. And make it hurdle. So that's all you've been instructed to do is just exhale around your back and look into the navel. Inhale slowly, a nice long slow. It's about a six second inhale. I don't want you to time it, so slow down. It's a nice long slow flow in the hot room. And slowly exhale. If you've ever had Bikram yoga, it's a nice, like a nice long pranayama, deep breathing, six second exhale. It's a normal breath down to the bottom. No, prani- no more ujjayi. Inhale. I don't teach ujjayi and asana. Open the chest, push the buttocks up. It's just an exercise to hear and feel your breath. Exhale. There's nice flow right there. So this is all about flow. And again, getting present with the breath, coordinating breath and movement. Inhale. This is nice flow right here. Feel it? A cork in the ocean. Exhale. And let it feel good, like you're giving yourself a little massage. Lift the middle back, squeeze the abs. Inhale, just a couple more rounds. That doesn't necessarily mean two to me. Open up, Catherine, look up, look up, look up. Exhale, get present with me. You're somewhere else today. Round all the way down, squeeze it, make it hurt a little bit. Stay there in the gap. Slowly inhale. Don't be in any hurry with this last inhalation. Open the chest, push the buttocks up in the air. So big expansive quality of prana here. Stay in breath, stay in breath please. Stay in your breath. Slowly exhale. Down into the gap. Let the breath return to normal. Look into the front of the yoga room. Engage your core. If you can see your third eye, that would be your drishti. If not, look at someone's costume. It's a deep room, I know. And bring your right arm forward and left leg back. No surprises here in the beginning of class. I like that your body knows what it's doing here. We're using big muscle groups, supporting strong postures, getting nice and hot in our integration series. Leg up and hip up a little bit. Just lift a little heavier weight. Beautiful. So it's getting nice and present long and strong. Open it up. Bring it out to the side, please. Your body knows what it's going to do, so we're not ripping the door off the hinges. It's just going into its yoga mode. That's why some of this I want to be familiar to the body in the beginning of our classes. Bring your leg a little bit further. Give her a kick in the butt. Kick her in the butt. Can you do it? He can own his own space, trust me. You put yourself in the mix. I like that, you know. Look forward. Look at your third eye. Why are your eyes wandering? And reach forward and reach back. She didn't tell you I was nice, did she? Bring your hip down. It's nice and long. And inhale up. Look up. Lift up. Inhale to the heart and feel. Extend through your left leg. Some of you have bent left knees, left leg extension. So lift everything up, but the hip. I don't want you to roll it over. Keep the foot nice and flat here. Good practice for later in your class. Looking in the mirror, not at the floor, hands and knees position. This is a posture name here. Squeeze your core. Bring the opposite arm forward. That's left arm for most of you, right leg back. Just do the opposite side if, if you did the other side. And rotate your hip down a little bit. I wish I could have got you in the mix a little more. So engaging your core. You're lifting to lengthen. You're drawing the abs and middle ribs in. Squeezing your core strength. I can see you've been going to the gym. And bring it out to the side. Strong. We like strong. Usable muscle. Eyes in the mirror. There, I like that a lot. So this is a tricky posture also, Jess. The trick is you're lifting your body weight. You're lifting the heavy weight. You've got to be willing to lift the heavy weight here. So you continue to lift your body weight into gravity and reach forward and back. There is a determination to stay in some of these postures, folks. And inhale up, look up, lift up. Go to that hard end feel and then work it. Every inhale, see if you lift a little bit more. This looks really good. Again, ideally not lifting the hip, keeping the foot flat right to that hard end feel. And hands and knees looking in the front mirror. Tuck the toes, press back to down dog. Why change now? Nice and set. It works. That's all I care about with my yoga practice. That's all I care about in our classes, that they're effective, that they work. Walk it out here today. Just walk it out, wag the dog if you want to. I used to like to wag the dog. It's not so effective for me anymore, so I don't teach it a lot. I tend to teach what I find effective is the truth. And then on the tips of the big toes, like I'm lifting you up and pulling you back. Continue to stretch your mat long. So some of you allowing the weight to come forward in the upper back, the upper back's rounding a little bit. I want you to push the back nice and long and flat. 
if I took you by your hips and lifted you up and pulled you back, would I be able to bring you back any further up any higher? And then stretch your heels back down. Do your best down dog. So this is a big deal around here. Good down dogs, folks. Your feet are hip width, just a little bit less would be perfect. And shoulder, the good, to starts with a good grip, a good hasta banda. Pushing the mat long, wrapping the lats around to the chest, making a nice socket for the shoulders to sit in. Always stretching your mat long. Pivot to a plank, looking in the front mirror in transition. Come on down into plank. What are you doing? Left hand to center, left knee on the ground. Look at the tip of the right thumb and rotate the right hand up. You're not here. You're just not here yet. <laughs> You're still in traffic on 85th. <laughs> Lift through the right middle rib cage. This is an integration series we're doing. So that, that, that's the entire point of this is just to switch our caps in these first few postures and really get nice and present on the mat. I've got to get a good sweat going before I can really get present on my hot yoga practice consistently. And extend, reach forward, pick your leg up like you're on a wall. You guys are looking really good, by the way. Just your practice today. Use your wall. So I am a great believer in using a wall. Excellent. If you fall, you fall back. Lift it high on the wall. Bring the foot down and hand up. Look up to the tip of the thumb. Colby, I'm going to train you, you know, if you come. And rotate. Look forward. Just come to a plank. Let's hold a nice plank here. Get your nice plank. Squeeze your core. Right hand to center. Right knee on the ground under the hip. Look at the tip of the left thumb and rotate up. Sometimes we're in a little bit of a hurry there because you guys do it well, but we really do want to set it up nicely. This is a side plank, so you engage the plank and you just turn it over to the side. You're not diminishing the core strength and the posture. A little higher on the wall. If you were to fall, would you fall back? Everybody ask yourself right now, if you were to fall, would you fall back? You guys leave the door open back here? I'm going to just guess this is an accident. And advance the posture if you want to advance the posture. There's where my heat went. Olga, bring your leg back onto the wall. Wall's back here. Yep. Lift it up hard and feel. Wrap your left lat around as you reach to the front of the yoga room. Breathe into your heart and feel. See if you can, last part, lift it up a little higher if you can. There it is. That's a big difference again. And bring the foot down and hand up. Look up to the tip of the thumb. Not impatient for release. Creating space out of both wrists, both elbows, both shoulders. If you fall, you fall back. So lift up the left shoulder high on the wall. Make sure you've got it on the wall. Even a little into the wall would be okay. And rotate back to a plank with your eyes off the floor. Engage your core. Downward facing dog. That's all. Move the left foot to center. Lock your right leg out and reach it back. So it's still a breath exercise. It's still a breath exercise. Bring your right knee to your nose or your forehead. Try to actually touch it. Bring the left heel up high. Inhale the right leg up and back, stretch back, left heel to the floor. Bring it to your right elbow, cross the bottom. Inhale up and back, stretch back. Good three-legged dogs. Bring it to your left elbow across the body. Inhale up and back, find the flow. Bring it to your nose or forehead and hold it. Try to actually touch. Nice, nice. A lot of y'all are touching. Try to actually touch it. Round the back, bring it up nice and high. Inhale up and back, stretch back, pause. Right elbow, it's just going to be a hold. Inhale up and back. Left elbow. Inhale up and back. Stretch back, three-legged dog. Your best three-legged dog. Length down the right side of the body. If I pull you back by your ankle, could I pull you back further? I couldn't pull Mary back. I'd just slide her hands down on the back on the mat. Return your right foot to the left. That was really nice, guys. So basically the dialogue was there, return the right to the left, lock the left leg out, and reach the locked left leg out. And stretch back. And again, just drop your gaze down. Drop your gaze down, big toe drishti. So you're just making a nice three-legged dog right now, stretching back. And bring the knee to your nose or your forehead. Inhale up and back, just find a flow, don't be in a hurry. Bring it to your left elbow. Inhale up and back. Bring it to the right elbow. Inhale up and back. Don't get ahead of me. Bring it to the nose or the forehead and hold. Just try to touch it. So everybody, feel your core. Don't avoid it, your core. Engage your core. Squeeze the knee into the, into the nose or forehead. Some of you are touching your forehead. Can you touch your nose? And inhale up and back. Bring it to the left elbow. Stay with me. Inhale up and back. Everybody's working hard. Bring it to the right elbow. 
Inhale up and back, three-legged dog. Stretch long down the left side of the body. Folks, this is just integration series. I know. That's the room we've got here. And step up to the top of the mat. Feet hip width at the top of the towel or mat. Hold your elbows hanging ragdoll pose. Come on up to the top of the mat. I don't want you to work your hands up and down the mat. Is there footwork in power yoga? You bet there is. You bet there is. Postures definitely start from the ground up. Transitions start from the ground up. So just as soft as you can get right now. Most of you should have soft knees or bent knees. Pulling the back nice and long and flat is the goal. If you do have your legs straight, there's a couple of you all that's all right for it. The weight should be forward in the balls of the feet. So you have to push through the big toes. If I'm deep in a standing forward bend, I'd fall forward if I wasn't pushing through my big toes. Bring your feet a little bit closer. You've been well trained. You know what you're doing. Let the hands slip away from the elbows so the arms dangle free. Soften your knees up a little more. This is your yoga class. I want you to feel good after your yoga. That's the only goal. On an inhale, begin your process of rounding up slow enough, slow down, Doris, that you can feel each and every vertebra stack on top of the last. But as efficiently and effectively as you can do that, take your time until eventually the neck stacks nicely and the gaze comes up. When that happens, do not hurry. Step the right foot back to left, toes and heels together. Tadasana. Inhale the arms out, back, and up over the head. Touch the palms, look up, stretch up. Own your space, please. Exhale, swan dive. If you really don't have space, you can bring prayer down center line. I prefer a swan dive. Halfway lift, look forward, lengthen, flatten the back. Palms flat, step or jump back, lowering with the same exhale, holding your chaturanga just for a moment. Don't hold the breath. Abs, thighs, no, selective hearing. Abs, thighs, lats, holding the pot. Come back to chaturanga if you have left chaturanga. I want everybody in chaturanga. Knees can be on the ground. It's just fine. Inhale, pull forward and look back. Thighs off the ground. Exhale, roll over the toes and press back. So nice flow through A series. I've got some newer students, new students, no rounding up. We already did that. Coming up with an inhale with a flat back. Folks, everybody in the room, I see some of even my regular students come up with chin to chest. The body follows the eyes coming up. So we want that flat back right away, kind of like coming up and down on the Bikram forward bend. So it's chin away from chest looking up. Body follows the eyes, keeps the back flat. If the chin's in the chest, there's always a little bit of a rounding through the upper back. Is this your best down dog, Perla? Soften the knees, coil of spring, look out ahead of you. That's a good down dog. Step, jump, if you can float, float between the hands. Inhale, halfway lift, look forward, flatten the back. Deeper to forward bend. Inhale, come up, find your flow up, arms out, back and up. You've got to own your space, please. And swan dive, chin away from chest. So if you're swan diving, please own your space. I don't want to compress swan dive. Lift halfway, everybody's working together. Step or jump back, lower with the exhale, slowly. We have an opportunity to pull the reins back a little bit here. Stay there. Up dog, inhale. Look back. Down dog, exhale. And if you don't know up dog and down dog by posture name, you will by the end of your class today. Do what they do. One more A series. Soften the knees, coil of spring. Look out ahead of you. Step, jump, lift the hips high and float. Halfway lift, it's long, slow flow, long breath. Deeper to forward fold. Inhale, come up. You can hear it in the room. Listen to the breath and move with it. And swan dive. Listen to the exhale above the white noise in the room together, folks. Halfway lift, inhale. Step or jump back slowly, smoothly, moving together with the flow. It's just a pause. Up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale, back to breath, back to practicing your best downward facing dog, really open your hands up. The first thing I'm looking at, I'm looking at the whole posture actually, I'm looking at your spine and your shoulders, hands are a big deal, hand lock. Spread your fingers open, distribute the weight evenly through all the joints of your upper body. B series, soften the knees, look out ahead of you. Step or jump between the hands. Halfway lift, look forward, get long. Deeper to forward bend. Chair pose, it's really a fierce pose. Hands up, chest up, duck butt. 
and fold, smooth exhale. Halfway lift, get long, don't hurry. Step or jump back, lower, slow flow. I should be in the mirror this entire time to good chaturangas. Hold it, hold it and look at it. Hold it with your abs, hold it with your thighs, hold it with your big lats. Breath is support. Pull forward for up dog as far as you can. Look back, down dog, excellent. Stretch your mat long. Push the whole hand into the floor. Reach your heels to the floor. Three-legged dog is a posture. Hold on. I don't want the leg just thrown up in the air. We're reaching it back. So it's coming up a banda. The right leg is a lock as we're lifting it up and reaching it back. And there's a moment to stretch the right side of the body long. So aren't you all, some, some of you are just kind of passing through that opportunity to get benefit from a powerful yoga posture. It's just a moment, but there's some yoga there, guys. Inhale the right leg up. Bring it up a banda. Reach back. Move with me. Bring it back down, everybody. Bring the right foot back down. Best down dog. Lollygag and lift the left leg up. That was even better. And bring the left leg down. Best down dog, please. We don't have flow stepping into it. We're not going to have flow coming into posture, folks. There were like three different flows going into the class. Move with the dialogue. That's the trick. Don't think about it. Move with it. Inhale the right leg up. Lunge the right foot, drop the left heel, and inhale to warrior one. Arms out, back, and up. That's all right. We share a little space. You're leaning back. You're leaning back. Palms tight. Look at the outside knuckle of thumb, squeezing your head at the biceps. Lock your back left leg. I'm seeing some nice warrior ones here, guys. So hip alignment's a big deal to me. Working your core bond is a really big deal. Always lifting pubic bone. I've got some really nice examples of a mula and udi on a bond happening here and good hip alignment. Just excellent examples everywhere here. So I want this really efficient and that's beautiful. Lock your arms out though. I want you to get a tight grip from your elbows and look up. Squeeze your elbows. If I can do it, you can do it. Exhale while you're two. Straight arms over the legs. Make it big right away, Olga. Take up space. David, take up your space also. I feel you holding back there. You're leaning forward. So is it big enough? Start there. I want your right thigh parallel to the floor with the knee stacked over the ankle joint. I don't care how many postures you complete today. I want this to be your best warrior too. If it's healthy for you. Otherwise, where is it healthy for you? Where's your work today? Locking the back left leg. We're squeezing the two heels together tightly. So there's a lift up out of the joints. The knee is over the toes, not bowing in. And some of you are just leaning forward over your right leg right now. You've got to push away with the right thigh and create that nice right angle as you sit down deeper into the posture. Come on back with me like I'm pulling you back. Sit down into your front leg and come back to me at the same time. You don't want it to be as hard as it is. Squeeze the heels together. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And cartwheel to a plank. Lower, slow, exhale. Let's have clean transitions, please. Up dog, inhale. Always good chaturangas. Down dog, exhale. Roll back over the toes. It all looks good to me right now. Three-legged dog is a posture. Lock the left leg first. Inhale the left leg up. Reach back and feel a stretch. Nice. And lunge the left foot. Drop the right heel. Warrior one. Just really simple yoga today, folks. I don't see that changing. Palms together. It works. Simple stuff works. Right hip forward, left hip back. I had a little better hip alignment on the other side, I think, from some of y'all. Yesterday's prayers aren't any good today, so I'm really going to pick on you. Diminish your stance a little and the angle of the foot just a little bit to square your hips off. The angle of the foot just a little bit. Point the toes to the mirror a little bit more. So right hip forward, left hip back. Again, strong Mulan Udiana Banda. You're lifting your pubic bone towards your navel as you're drawing the abs and middle ribs in. Just beautiful examples here of that happening. Also, also, beautiful. Warrior two, exhale, arms over the legs. So make it big right away. Take your space, not leaning over the front thigh. So what do we talk about on the other side? A lot of y'all are leaning forward. Get that push away. Sometimes people don't want postures to be as hard as they are. Warrior two is a big, strong, athletic yoga posture. If you're all the way in it, left thigh parallel, knee over the ankle, tracking over the toes, locking your back right leg, and it's a tight squeeze between the heels. Lifting the joints, not sitting in the joints right now. Working your bandhas, your mulan udiana bandha. Just stay present with your big hold here, guys. It's all breath. You're almost there. And cartwheel to a plank. Lower, slow. Exhale. Good chaturangas. Look in the mirror. Stop at your elbows, please. Up dog. Nothing drops below elbows but knees for support. 
down dog, big deal. Chaturanga's a big deal. With nice flow, moving and breathing together, pivot to a plank, a high push-up. Just do it. Lower slowly, move forward. Everybody stop at your elbows, right at your elbows. Fire your thighs and feel your thighs and feel your abs. Up dog, inhale, much better. Down dog, exhale, that was much better. And now we're having some fun. Warrior one to three, inhale the right leg up. Stay simple. Lunge the right foot, drop the left heel, warrior one. Lift and reach to warrior three. Third eye drishti, laser pointer to your third eye. If you can't see yourself, get someone's costume. So you've got the leg and the arms are heavy, the chest is heavy, you just gotta lift into gravity. So every inhale, lift it up. Laser pointer to the third eye. Laser pointer to the third eye, and then stretch long down your mat. Keep the laser on your third eye. Warrior one, no judgment, not good or bad. Warrior two, open it right up to a big warrior two. This isn't gonna be a long hold. So make it big, everybody. You know now, everybody needed to be bigger the first round. Make it nice and big second time around. Squeeze the heels. Almost everybody in the room can be bigger. I did say almost. There, thank you. Turn your palms up and reach forward over the right leg. Good adjustments. Pulling back on the heel even more right now. So don't anticipate release. Don't anticipate anything. Be in the burn. Be in the breath. Pull back on the right heel. Get nice and active. Breath is support. Don't count it down in your head. And reverse the posture. Reaching space down the right side of the body. Reaching compression down the left side. Wrapping your right lat around. So it's like you have both shoulders on the wall behind you. Some of you need to wrap your right lat around to the chest a little bit more to do that. Getting the right shoulder, the left shoulder back onto the wall. So, so think about it. Would your left shoulder be on the wall with your right shoulder right now? Some of you need to make it a little more open to do that. And cartwheel to a plank. Don't hurry. Lower. Exhale slowly. Eyes off floor. Please look at your chaturangas. Up dog, inhale, you've really got to fire the thighs today, a couple of y'all. Exhale, down dog. If you think I'm talking to you, I am. That's just a chaturanga is a big deal, like I just said. Fire your thighs, feel your core. Inhale the left leg up, move with flow. Lunge the left foot, drop the right heel. Inhale to a nice warrior one, hip square. Look up, lift up. Warrior three, don't drop the gaze, don't drop the arms. Look right into the mirror. So it, nothing changes from the warrior one. It just, you're just bringing it horizontal. The gaze is the outside knuckle of the thumb. Lifting the arms, lifting the chest, stretching long. Eyes up, Chris. Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Arms up, point at yourself in the mirror. Look in the mirror and point at yourself in the mirror. You can do it. Leg up, leg up, leg up, leg up. And warrior one, nice. You just have to think that way. And warrior two. Knee over toes, lock the back leg. Make it big, make it strong. Just give it support. And keep the support, turn your palms up and reach forward over the left leg. Keep pulling back on the left heel. Squeezing, lifting, staying in your breath. Some of you anticipating release. Get back into that posture, please. You're in it with your mind, you're in it with your breath. You're in the burn, you're not avoiding the burn. Push into it and pull back, breathe into it and reverse slide on your wall. So some of your shoulders, again, were popping off the wall. More open is the fuse. This is perfect. Wrapping your lat around, so you're bringing the left side of your chest over towards the right side of the room and pulling your right shoulder back onto the wall behind you as you're doing it. There you go. That dialogue worked for a lot of y'all. There you go. Those were some nice adjustments there. So that's what I want you to feel. It, is it really isolates that stretch down the left side of the body like a Bikram standing half moon that I was planning on doing today. Claudia likes this one. And cartwheel to a plank and does it beautifully. Lower slow, exhale, don't time it, look in the mirror, stop there, look in the mirror, you've gotta look at it. Inhale up dog, you've look, gotta look at that chaturanga. Exhale down dog. Everybody pivot to a plank, eyes in the mirror and transition. So use your mirror. Lower slowly, chaturanga. Use your mirror. Stop at the elbows. Shoulders high. Inhale. Exhale.
triangle pose. Inhale the right leg up. Lunge the right foot, drop the left heel to 45, straighten both legs. As you lift, lengthen and rotate open onto the wall behind you. I'm a big fan of having the feeling of getting a wall behind you here. Lots of these postures I use the wall. Tuck the right shoulder under, lift up out of the bottom right shoulder as you anchor the right hand down. So I do want you to hold on to your ankle or your foot. A couple of you can hook the big toe, eh, maybe one of you. Actually, some days I've got a couple people in here. Some days they can, some days they can't. You probably can today, Cloud, if you wanted to. Look up, lift up, bring your upper back onto the wall. Bring your back towards me more, towards my hand more. And rotate the left hand down. Lift the chest so the back's flat, hips are square to the mirror. Center, the, center yourself, folks. Take your right ankle with the left hand and reach straight up for a rotated triangle. Both legs straight. Bring your chin into the right shoulder. So I want that nice tabletop on your sacrum. I could put a glass of water on your sacrum right now and it wouldn't spill. Feeling space out of the bottom left shoulder is one of the things I'm after as you look up, reach up. This is one of the most important postures of your standing series to me right now. Out of the bottom shoulder, even more, even more. Nice, John. And rotate the right hand down. Also, lift into balancing airplane pose, please. Ekapada da Costa, simple set series here today, folks. Just a nice, simple, hard-working yoga class. So you've just got to be determined to lift. And open to half moon pose. Like there's a wall behind you, open onto the wall. On the wall. You can do this. You can do this. Lift onto the wall. The leg's going to get heavy. Back to airplane. The leg just gets heavy. Lift the leg, lift the chest, lift the arms. Lift the leg, 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 lift the leg. Warrior one, step back to warrior one, right foot forward. Warrior two, exhale, arms over the legs. The leg just gets heavy, folks. If you're not used to doing these, some of these postures, you've really got to bond, work on the back leg, bond to the back leg. This would be an example of it right now is why I'm saying it. What, bond to the back left leg all the way. Squeeze the quadricep against the bone. And if it feels like it needs to be bigger, let it be bigger. Beautiful, beautiful, and beautiful. Right elbow to the inside of the right knee. Push the knee back with the elbow. Bring the chin into the left shoulder and create some space. Spread the fingers. Create space in your body and your joints right now. Spread the fingers. Stretch out nice and long. We might not even bind it today. There's only a couple in the room that should be binding it anyway. And only supporting it if you need to. I don't think you need to. If you are supporting it, it's as little as possible, as much as necessary. This is all we're going to do today, folks, is open your shoulders here as you look up and push the knee back and squeeze the two heels together tightly. And stay in your breath and stay in your drishti. Everybody looks really good here right now. Keep the squeeze, stay strong, and push back up to big warrior twos. And really finish with a nice warrior two. We are not going to do more warrior twos today. Make it big, sit down into it, right thigh parallel, squeezing and lifting, engaging core bandhas, smiling at yourself as you watch yourself suffer in the front mirror. Why is no one smiling? Oh, there's a smile. That's a, that's a sneer. And cartwheel to a plank. Eyes off the floor in transition. Get used to looking in the mirror, not at the floor. Left hand to center, stack the right foot on top of the left, and rotate the right hand up. Everybody's working beautifully, folks. Saturday mornings are kind of, even if it's just really basic yoga, it's kind of a boot camp energy here on Saturday mornings. You all create it. I love it. But you, but you guys are creating the energy in the room right now. It's huge. Advance the posture. It's just a big, big, big yoga energy you guys create together. For those of you that are new to it, a lot of these people have been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years together. I've got four or five students here that have been with me from pretty much the beginning, 23, four years ago. It's a lot. It's a long time. Stay there, stay there, stay there. I was just coming to beg you to stay there. And rotate back to a plank posture. I was just coming. I heard all that. Lower slowly. Good chaturanga. Up dog. Inhale. Work on your chaturanga. Exhale. Down dog. Roll over the toes. Back to breath. Back to stretching your mat long. Back to practicing yoga in a restorative yoga posture. Not waiting for the next thing. The next thing is triangle, however. Inhale the left leg up. Lunge the left foot, right heel, about 45 degrees, so it's pointed to the mirror, the toes. Straighten both legs, lift, lengthen, rotate open. I do want you to anchor your left hand down. I, I anchor our triangles, the hands is straight, it's like a prayer hand. With, anchor, with 
joint on joint. I don't want that, guys. I, I want to anchor down so you can lift up out of your bottom left shoulder. So some of you have what I just talked about. You're having a kind of an Iyengar bottom left hand right now. I want you to grab onto something, your ankle, the top of your foot. There's one or two of you that can hook the big toe. Kristen can do it. Some of you can reach a little lower. A lot of y'all, you can reach lower. Come down so the body's parallel to the floor, creating the triangle between the left leg, left side of the torso, and left arm. I should have caught that earlier. A lot of you need to create that nice triangle here on the side. And rotate the right hand down. Yesterday's prayers aren't any good today. Square the hips and shoulders. Everybody diminishes the stance and the angle of the foot to do it. Even Kristen. Take the left ankle with the right hand. She does this about as well as anybody. Tuck the right shoulder under and look up. Lift up. Yeah, you can shorten that up even a little bit more. Yep, it'll be more stable. Square your hips off more. I'm not going to pick on you too much. I want you to have a good experience. Tuck the shoulder or bring your chin into the left shoulder. I'd love to train you, though. So there we go. So it's big warrior two arms, reaching space. So I want everybody to push away with the right arm and tuck your right shoulder under and reach up at the same time. Try to tuck the right shoulder right under. David, nice. And rotate the left hand down. Also, Mike, some beautiful rotated triangles. Move into balancing airplane pose. Folks, that's one of the most important postures in your series to be that rotated triangle. What is the trick to this posture? You're lifting your body weight against gravity. You have to be determined, and you have to continue to lift. So there's a real determination to lift into gravity. Lift into it or give into it. Half moon pose. We never give into it. We always lift into it. Lift your hip up. So open all the way up. So the stability is all the way in the posture. A lot of these postures, stability is in the depth of the posture. Balance on your razor's edge. Keep lifting the chest and lifting the leg. And back to an airplane pose. You know that's all you're going to do. So let's get a nice airplane pose here, please. Lift your chest up. Some of you need to lift your chest up. Chest up. Warrior one, left foot forward. Warrior two, exhale. Arms over the legs. Make it big. Make it strong. Make it supported. Squeeze the heels together. Feeling that nice lift. Is this your best version of a warrior two? Left elbow to the inside of the left knee. Look up, reach up. And I would actually prefer you didn't know because that means you're taking class the way I want you to, just present with what you're doing. But most of you know that's all we're going to do here. Elbow to knee. I don't want you to think. I want you to be present right now with your extended warrior pose. Look up, lift up, space shoulder to shoulder. Very much like the triangle we just did, but active through the base, pushing the knee back. Most of you can get a pretty good hip opener here. If you're not looking for that hip opener, I'd like you to try to push the knee back with the elbow and feel that opening and just stay in the breath. Breathe through the nose, breath back to nose always. So stay strong here, folks. Keep the squeeze and just pivot back up to a big warrior two pose. You're doing just great, everybody. Arms up, arms up, everybody. Big warrior two, arms up, everybody. Big warrior two pose, squeeze it. Mary, don't show me you're fatigued. Push away with your left thigh, you're leaning forward. You're leaning forward, you weren't on the other side. You got that whole thing I said, right? Okay. Back arm up. Same thing. Same thing. And cartwheel to a plank. Right hand to center. Stack the left foot on top of the right. Rotate the left hand up. It's just a set little sequence tonight, guys, for today. <laughs> What's the difference? The room's not horribly hot or humid. What's the difference? There is a difference. Hips up, hips up, hips up, hips up, hips up. If you do advance it, advance it. You do not have to. You have your knee off the ground. This is a genuine arm balance. Stacking the joints nicely. If you're going to do it, own it. Push the big toe down and own it. If you're going to do it, open it up. Look up. Fall back. No, don't look at me. Look up. Look up to the ceiling and fall back. Stay there. Please stay there. Same thing. And rotate to a plank. Thank you. Lower slowly to good chaturangas. Up dog. Inhale. Down dog, exhale. And I would like you to ask yourself right now if you are hydrated. It makes a big difference. Soften the knees, coil of spring, look out in the front mirror. Step, jump, lift hips high and land lightly. Halfway lift, look forward, deeper forward, fold, a series up, just come up, arms out, back and up, everybody just come up, look up, stretch up, look up, stretch up, 
Prayer to the heart. Arms to your side. Standing pose. Pick up your right foot. Bring the right foot to the inside of the left leg above or below the knee. Brooks Austin's called a tree pose. So bringing the knee back onto the wall from the side, it looks like you have one hip, one knee, one shoulder. If you wanted to be from standing half lotus, if you're already in it, that's fine. It's a different posture, but that's just fine. Some of you are there. Advance it if you'd like to advance it. But bring the hands over the head and spreading your fingers like the branches of a tree. Look up. Look up. Lift up. Look forward. Prayer to heart. Just a short little hold today. Stay in prayer. Bring the right foot down. Bring the left foot up. Take the left ankle with the left hand. Bring the left foot to the inside of the right leg, above or below the knee. Excellent. Maintain Tadasana through the torso. That means the shoulders don't move. And bring the hands up. Again, extending like branches of a tree, reaching up, look up. So when I do this posture, I was trained when I was a little kid. It's like there's a big ball of sun we're looking up at, like a basketball full of energy. Then you can get between your hands and you're looking up at it and you're bringing it up and bringing it into the body through the open energy channels. Don't anticipate, Mike. Look forward, prayer to heart. Yeah, we did hold it a little longer, but you guys are in a different place. You're not supposed to be thinking about that. Standing pose. Left hand reaches to the ceiling. Right elbow on the right hip, palm faces up. Bring the right hand straight back behind you. Pick up the right ankle from the inside without twisting your wrist. Touch your knees together first. Kick straight back, reach straight forward, open your shoulder, standing bow. For a lot of y'all, this is a standing upper body, up stretch, upper back and shoulder stretch. Making a bow, lifting your chest up, reaching and kicking the shoulders open, feeling that tension of a bow. Kicking so hard you can only fall forward, some of your left arms need to be higher, shoulder to chin is the dialogue. I look to my third eye and reach to my third eye when I practice this posture. And come out reaching to the ceiling. Come out nicely reaching to the ceiling. Standing pose. Right hand reaches up. Left elbow on the left hip. Palm up. Bring the left hand back behind you. Pick up the ankle from the inside. Ah, shit. He's going to pick on me again, isn't he? Put your, is your hand right here? Turn your hand around. All the way the other way. Kick straight back. Reach straight forward. Don't do anything. I want this. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. More kick. And reach. And more kick. And more reach. Find a place you can stand with this and stretch your shoulders and upper back. Where can you stand with it? You've got to kick consistently to find that place. Where can you stand with it? And breathe into it. Reach for the ceiling. Bring the knee in. Reach, 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 reach. And standing pose. I don't know. You guys all want to do it again? Second set? Left hand reaches to the ceiling, right elbow on the right hip. Yes. Bring the right hand back behind you, pick up the ankle, and sit down if you don't want to do it. Touch the knees together. That's always an option around here. I'm really surprised you're sitting down, though. Can I come harass you a little bit? Touch the knees together and kick straight back and reach straight forward. What else have you been doing? I know my students. Open the body up, kick and reach. So open your shoulders, keep the gaze in the mirror. So you're looking at your third eye, you're reaching to your third eye, trying to make the right shoulder actually vanish behind the left. So you're opening the bow, kicking and reaching, try to make the right shoulder vanish and lift the chest. Find a place you can stand with it and stretch. And come back out, reach to the ceiling, reach for it. Standing pose. So it's really important, folks, if you're learning standing bow, that you find a place that you can stand and you can find stability standing. If you're trying to go too deep and you don't have a good base, that, the base is as deep as you can go, really, with a stability. Not looking, not struggling for balance. So I'm giving some of you an option here to see what you're going to do. Right hand reaches up, left elbow on the left hip, palm up. Bring the left hand back behind you. Pick up the ankle from the inside. Touch your knees together. So just open the shoulders up. Just think both hands high and open your shoulders. I don't care how far down you come. I don't care how far forward you come. I don't care how far down, but you should never drop the chest. The gaze is in the mirror and you're lifting everything. You're lifting the chest. You're lifting both arms. Both arms lifting and kicking and reaching. Kicking so hard you can only fall forward. Let's see it all the way down. Let's see it all the way down. Kodak moment. All the way down. All the way down. All the way down. And come out nicely. Thank you. We got it. And standing pose. 
Standing pose, dead pose. You guys are just working hard today. That's all it is, folks. You're working hard in the hot room. Head to the front mirror, feet to the back of the yoga room. So that's the yoga. It's being able to be in the room and do this work, folks. Being able to bring the heart rate down, not up. Being able to control your respiratory system. By controlling your mind. And it is a surrender. There is a surrender. There is an intent. Dead body pose. If you're holding on to anything at all, let it go right now. It's a perfect opportunity. If anything's coming up, anywhere, don't carry it around anymore. Let it go. They're called clashes, and sometimes they pop up. If your eyes are closed, slowly open the eyes. Leave it here. Inhale your arms over that. Flex your feet back. Cross your thumbs. Dive for the toes. Let's be strong. Double pump, double exhale. Forward to the knees. It's like a Bikram yoga class. Lie down on your belly. If you've ever, ever had Bikram yoga and you haven't had my class, pretend like you're in a Bikram class right now. Hands under the shoulders, arms close, elbows high, because this just works. <laughs> this just works. Squeeze your legs together. Make a good cobra's tail. Exhale through the nose. Now inhale, look up and pull up. Don't push up. Pull the elbows back, shoulders soft away from the ears. The flat back. It's not an up dog pulling, it's a flat back pulling. Push the feet into the floor and use the legs even more to access low back. One more set of ribs up if you can. Everybody, one more set of ribs up. And down slowly, left ear on the ground, look right, dead body pose. Chin flat on the floor. Set up the same posture right down to a good cobra's tail. Bring the heels of the hands to the hips, to your waistline. Lock your legs, and on inhale, squeeze legs. Please make cobra's tails. Push your chest up, lift your thighs up. Pushing hard enough with your triceps that the shoulders and elbows are the same height. Some of you need to push harder, like you're doing a bar dip. Push with your triceps. Push it up. Shoulders are soft. Pushing with triceps. Now lock the legs all the way, all the way. No bend in the knees, no space, and lift them higher. And lift them higher. And push the shoulders up again. Lift your upper thighs off the floor. And come down slowly. Right here on the ground, look left, dead body pose. Chin flat on the floor, it's all right. Hands behind the back, let's keep it simple again today. Interlace the fingers, we're going to do two rounds of this. So let's just do it. Lock your arms out, lock your legs out, bring your hands high, make your cobra's tail, and inhale everything up. Squeeze your legs. Bring the upper thighs high off the floor and try to touch the knuckles of your hands to your heels. Lift it higher as you bring the arms out to the side. Lift as you're bringing the arms out to the side. Hands on in front of you, shoulder width. Feet come to hip width. Inhale to a new heart and feel. Everybody inhale up to a new heart and feel, please. And down slowly. No dying pose. Left ear on the ground, look right. Dead body pose. Just settle. Don't hold on to it. Let it go. I just changed my mind. Sometimes I do that. Chin flat on the floor. Bend the knees. Bring the heels to the hips. Grab your feet. Thumbs of the fingers. Drives my wife nuts. Is that true? Press the soft part of the belly into the floor. And inhale. Kick straight up. Kick it up. Kick the weight forward. So it's a strong kick. Pick it up, pick it up, look up, and he's going to pick on me again. Oh, my God, look up, go up. That's where I want you. You're there. Kick, 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 kick it forward. You are already there. Kick, kick, kick. That, I can't tell by looking. That's exactly where I want you. That's a nice bow. Kick it up, pick it up, stretch it up, wait for it. That's going to be your standing bow. And come back down. That's how hard you kick in standing bow. Right here on the ground, look left. I do want one more set of bow, folks. Chin flat on the floor, bend the knees, heels to the hips. 
Just do it. If you've got the juice, do it. If you don't, don't. I mean, it's a, it's a really simple little crossroads. <laughs> kick. If you're doing it, kick. Get a grip and kick and come into posture. It's not more or less correct to be doing the posture or not to be doing the posture. All I care about is how you feel after your class today. But look up. Kick it up. Kick, Gary. Look up. Open your chest up. Kick the pelvic girdle up. Kick the weight forward. That's excellent. One more opportunity to stretch the legs up, 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 up. Make that bow tension. And down slowly to left ear on the ground. Look right. Left ear on the ground. Look right. Don't worry. We're not doing any more. Right ear on the ground. Look left. Just to balance your neck, please. And it does make a difference. And happy baby pose. Roll over onto your back. Done is done. So these last postures are the most important in your yoga class, folks. I would like you to reaffirm your energy and your intent and your effort and finish it strongly. There's just a few postures left, as most of you know. We're nice and warm it up, burn it out, stretch it out. That's the way I was taught sequencing. Warm it up, burn it out, stretch it out. Pull the knees down towards the floor. And this is excellent. You can do this. I love this posture. I feel it in my hips and thighs. I'm able to bring it into my sacrum, which is really where I want you to feel it, if I kick into it and pull the knees down towards the floor. I think this is a good... I'm going to be teaching a restorative yoga class on Wednesday at 6.30, not power. It's going to be uh, probably a 90-minute class, and I'm doing it again on Sunday. I'm supposed to tell you guys, so I'm going to forget if I don't do it now. Kick into it and pull your knees down. I think it's a great class. I, I take most of it with you all. And release the tension first. We spend a lot of time in deep stretches in the hips, things like that. All fun and games, huh? No? Inhale your arms over that. Flex your feet back. Cross the thumbs. Dive for the toes. Double pump. Double exhale. Forehead to the knees. Come to the top of the towel. Camel pose. Let's do these back bends, folks. Boom, boom. Don't get stuck in the mud. Y'all ever run in the sand or in the mud? There's a trick. Keep the knees high and keep moving. Let's keep moving here. Lift through the thighs. Support your sacrum. Look back. Go back. Support it as far as you can. Then wait for your teacher, folks. Bikram-based yoga. And then reach back. If it's safe and healthy for you, if you get dizzy, you get lightheaded, you get nauseous, point your toes. Point your toes. On the other, next time we do it, I want your toes pointed. And come back up. It's taking about a third out of it. Sit back, hips to heels. Release. Dead body pose. Stay with the flow of the class. Dead body pose. Move with the flow of the class. Dead body pose. If you do a wheel, do a wheel. If you want to do another camel, do another camel. Do the sit-up if you're doing a camel. Push your chest forward, so tighten your wheels up. Walk your feet as, I want that hard end feel again here. Push your hips up high and drive your chest forward in your wheel pose. Camel pose, hips forward, reach back. Maybe you couldn't on the first set, second set you can reach back. Stay in your breath. Any posture you're in right now, it's the same principle. Stay in your breath, stay in your drishti, stay in your yoga practice. Dead pose is a posture, the most important posture. And come out nice and cleanly with support, whatever posture you're practicing. And find your way to dead body pose. Back release pose. And come to shoulder stand. Sarvangasana, shoulder stand pose. Chest to chin, we want the throat lock. Bikram-based yoga, like I've said a couple of times. Want that compression through the thyroid and parathyroid right now. It's not really giving you energy as much as balancing your energy, the throat lock. Stretch your legs up high on the wall. So some of you need to make a better cobra's tail. Some of you can bring the hips forward to the mirror, heels back towards the wall and really get nice and straight. Pat's doing the best she can do here. Also, push your hips forward more, heels to the wall. Also, hips forward, heels to the wall. And come to plow pose, halasana. This is one that I was planning on doing the other night in our restorative class, ending class. with. I like this posture at the end of a restorative class. We didn't have time. I went, 
hour and 45 minutes again. Just walk the feet forward. So when I do it with you, I get super timeless, apparently. First class was almost two hours. And come back down. Bring the right knee into the chest, left leg down. On your back, you can twist, or you can take it to a seated position and twist. Seated position, if you'd like, it's just fine. Reach over the right, so reaching your right hand at about a 30 degree angle to the front mirror. Chin's in the right shoulder, tip of the thumb, drishti ish, if that's comfortable. And back to center position. Same thing you did on the other side, whatever you did it, do it on the other side. And twist. If you haven't twisted yet, twist. I like a little bit of fresh air in the room for your last dead pose, folks. I want to bring that prawn into the body. Not stale air. Back to center position. Dead body pose. Just dead body pose. Like you haven't done anything, like you're not going to do anything, like the reason you came to go yoga today was just to practice dead pose right now. No right, no wrong, no judgment, no good, no bad. Dead pose. So all that matters to me in your entire class, whatever your experience has been, is the quality of your dead pose right now. That's all I really care about is that you can surrender into this moment. And there is some awareness, even a little bit of awareness of a I am that's separate from the intellect and the busy mind having an experience. It just starts with a concept of it, self. And then the ego vanishes into the self. That's our process. So centered in self, in your heart. Take a long, slow inhale through the nose. Make the lungs as big and uncomfortably full as you can hold them. Let go and fall. Namaste.